today's cup of coffee. We're back to old school yeah. as far as technology. That's okay. Yes. We're working on it. We're working on our classic to, style. <laughs> our classic style that the viewfinder is now white. <laughs> it's because our camera, uh, the um, the ribbon cable in the viewfinder is broken. So whenever we open the viewfinder, it just goes completely white. Yeah. So, and so we we looking into doing something a little bit different. Yeah. So if you've got one of these th- that the viewfinder flips out, just be aware that it can totally flip out. Yeah. Not in a good way. <laughs> Anything with ribbon cables, be careful with yeah. those. But you know, I have not abused this camera. I have not abused it. You've had it for many years. I guess I have. Yes. Longer than I realize. Mm-hmm. So... But it has been wonderful. They do not even make the Canon Vixia. What is it? It's an HR something. I don't even know. I can't see it on it. It'll be all right. Canon Vixia HF R82. R82. But it has been a damn good camera. Mm -hmm. It truly has. Yeah, it's done us good. It's done you good yeah. for a long time. It has. It has been a very faithful little camera. It was money well spent. Yeah. So hopefully we can get something in the near near future. Yeah. That's. You've had to get it repaired one, once before. I did. I did have to take it to Johnson City, Tennessee to get it repaired and then go back after it. <laughs> And I just don't have it in me to do that this time. No. I mean, I probably could mail it, and that's just... That's... No. That's a lot of hassle. Plus, that's it a lot is. of money. It is. And, and actually, after they repaired it the other time, I could no longer take, like, just pictures with it mm. for whatever reason. That's odd. I thought it was odd. I thought it was odd. Yeah. We do not have a lot of places around here that repairs electronics. Mm. No, we don't. And I think we've become such a disposable society that people don't even try to repair things. No, because most companies, most tech companies now don't want, like, phones or cameras, whatever, to be repairable. Right. Other than computers, you know. Right. And even those, it's like the Apple that you did the impossible and actually... The MacBook. Yeah, that you replace the battery when they're like, it can't be done. The only reason it could be done was because it was an older model that I could access... Easily. You did an excellent job on that. You really did. He he doesn't give himself enough credit, so I will. We it have, was all right for my first time yeah. doing that. It was all right. Yeah, I was way proud of you. Yeah. And well, it's like he's not giving up on the whatever gaming system that had the ring of death. No, At I, some point, he'll try it again. I, I just I just don't have the money for a heat gun. Well, I don't I don't want a heat gun right now. It's not my main. I got an Xbox. That one's just a fuckery one until... Well, and it's okay because yeah. we could use that for other projects. Yeah. We have a way cool story today. Mm-hmm. I think this is just cool as hell. And this comes from Daily Mail and is by Erica Nordozzi. February 26th of 2023. We and may or may not call him barbecue. <laughs> God, I hope not. <laughs> It says, a man has virtually memorialized his late father by creating a QR code for his gravestone so people visiting the cemetery can learn learn more about his fascinating life. Michael Burcue. Barbecue. No, 55, an inventor and engineer from Melrose, Massachusetts, was mourning his father, John Harold Burcue, who passed away April the uh, April in 2017 mm-hmm. at the age of 87 when he had a flash of inspiration about how to honor his legacy. And he quotes, this would be the one, this would be Michael that quotes, when someone dies, they put a marker on the in the ground before you buy the stone. I thought, geez, no, no one's going to see this. So, there's so much more to know about my dad. And in an instant, I came up with this idea, end quote. Michael used a idea? 3D printer to make a QR code medallion out of waterproof plastic that glows in the dark before mm. gluing it to his father's gravestone. When passerby scan with their cell phone, they are taken to a website featuring his dad's biography, including photos and a timeline of his life. That is so cool. That is amazing. I, I mean, I'm glad somebody thought about People it. People need to do that. 
And this is what happens a lot of times. People are like, damn, that was a really good idea. Why yeah. didn't I think of that? Yeah. Somebody has to be the first one. And John, the youngest of five children, was born in Melrose during the Great Depression and enlisted in the U.S. Army in 1951 during the Korean War. The atomic veteran, who was a carpenter by trade, constructed homes that were blown up during the nuclear testing that took place at Camp Desert Rock in Nevada. Oh, my God. That's pretty awesome. That is really cool. And uh, his son explained, quote, he had to hide in a bunker on the ground while they blew off this atomic weapon. Then his job was to go back in and see the destruction that it had caused, end quote. (laughs) But now think about it. Well, the man lived to be 87, yeah, so that says something. That does. That gives us hope for other things. <laughs> and Michael shared that John was also a great dad who helped fuel his interest in innovation and engineering. Uh, he stated, quote, We grew up poor, and my dad was too cheap to pay for anybody to fix anything. So I was told that a young, as a young kid who held the flashlight while we fixed everything, so he taught him, you know, yeah. Okay, that's yeah. pretty cool. So he taught him to do all that he stuff. He did. And his says that his father taught him everything from plumbing to electricity to carpentry, and that he credits a lot of his creativity and innovative skills and abilities uh, to things that his dad taught him. That is so cool. Everybody needs to be teaching their children that. Yes. And how to cook for themselves. Michael added that his father also had a great sense of humor and would get a kick out of the QR code that he had made for his gravestone. And he uh, further said, quote, you know that what he'd be saying about this product? He'd be saying, this is one of those products that people are dying to use, end quote. That is such a bad <laughs> pun. That is a bad pun. Yeah, it was a good one. <laughs> it's a good one. Yours was meh, yeah, meh. Yeah. <laughs> and it says... Meh. The futurist, the self-futurist, my God, let's start it over. The self-described futurist recalled how his dad helped him to start his cannabis vaporizer company in his final years. Thank you. Michael was initially hesitant to tell him about his product because his father was firmly against marijuana use when he was growing up, but he ended up receiving the full support of his father. Hmm. Because his father, that was during that reefer madness phase, everybody, they were demonizing, you know, marijuana. Yeah, because all that. everybody going to be crazy when they do it. Michael explained, quote, I was really worried that he would look down on me. He did quite to the contrary. He helped me bring this company to life. He helped me bring the product to life, and it gave me a lot of courage, end quote. Michael said his father had all of the uh, faculties that, all his faculties before he died and was smart and witty until the end. And John had cared for his wife, Elizabeth, for as long as he could while she battled dementia. And folks, if you've never had to deal with some a loved one that has dementia, my God, it's a hell on earth. It, it really is. is. It is a cruel and vicious mm-hmm. disease. There's worse things than death. Yeah. And years after his father's death. I love anybody that has to deal with it. Yeah. After his father's death, he was inspired to share a photo of the QR code he made for his gravestone on LinkedIn, where it went viral. And Michael quoted, everyone's been uh, scanning it, and when someone scans it, I know where they are in the world, he explained. This has been scanned all over the world, even Korea, where my father fought in the Korean War. He'd be so thrilled to know that his story has reached that far, end quote. Michael made the QR code reprogrammable so he can redirect it to any location he wants. It can go to a certain page one day or play a song the next. He plans on making another one for his brother who died of ALS at age 58. The designer is not the first to make a QR code in someone's honor, but he wants to make the practice more widespread and is uh, and revolutionize how we pay tribute to the dead. It should be. Yeah, he states... Quote, I think we can get people over the idea that being in a graveyard is morbid. It's not. It's a beautiful place to go, actually. And if QR codes were there, I think people would scan them, end quote. It is like a museum a lot of times. Yeah. 
Michael is now working to build this technology with AfterCloud, a UK-based company that developed an app for preserving family history and digital memories. He has since redirected his father's QR code, which initially went to a page on Legacy.com, to AfterCloud. Quote, I'm looking for a graveyard or cemetery that would like to build a new immersive experience, he said. Quote, let's put all of these on all graves, end quote. That's just fascinating to me. That really is. Honestly, I am all for that. Oh, yeah. Like, the more ways to learn about the people... It makes them real. Yeah. It's not just a name. It's not just dates on on a piece of stone. Like, that gives you a way to actually learn about the person. And how cool would that be for future generations? That's so much history that will no longer be lost. Right. Right. I mean, all these, because youngest kid and I, we love cemeteries. We respect the dead. And as far as honoring the lives that are there, even the ones that we never knew. And, but it is such an amazing place to go. There is a lot of peace. No, we don't go there after dark. No. Because that's when some of the restless ones will come out and we'd rather not but this well that and grave robbers yeah well th- you don't have to worry about that around here they, nobody's got anything that's worth stealing <laughs> actually they don't bury people with things anymore so that's prevented quite a bit of the grave robbing oh they don't no no they give everything back to the family now hmm. I figured they would hmm. what I figured they would bury people uh-uh. people with stuff uh uh-uh. uh what's the point what's the point uh-huh. but this would be awesome to be yeah. able to go through and learn about other people. It would be. To have snippets of their lives. Yeah. To so, be able to see who they were yeah, as people. Put a face on it. Yeah. Yeah. So that that could give a totally different spin on going to a cemetery Mm -hmm. that it doesn't have to be morbid and morose and different things like that that it can be a celebration of somebody's life yeah so final thoughts i'm all for it (laughs) i am too yeah i think that's just i think it's great Mm -hmm. so if you've had experience of experiences we've got cat over here on a box that's he's making noise he's and it's breaking distracting the box. me he is breaking that box <laughs> if you've had experiences with paranormal or supernatural he's crushing that box under his weight <laughs> encounters with ufos aliens cryptids let us know what you think about these qr codes on the tombstones i'd do that oh yeah and you can send us an email cup of coffee with scream at gmail.com and that will be in the description box plus link to the article. Yeah. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, comment, and most of all, subscribe and click that notification button for daily notifications of our daily uploads. Thank you all and have a good. I feel like I have stuttered and stammered all through this one. It's okay. I've basically been... It's all right. It's late. Yeah. It's late. We had one of those interesting days. They're all interesting anymore. Right? Oh, We're why? in an interesting time. You know, that's a Chinese curse. May you be born in interesting times. Somebody spoke that on us. Somebody. Somebody. 2023, so. the roaring 20s. Oh, God. Oh, We're back in those. My God. There was war in the 20s and back in the 1920s. Now there's shit happening in the 2020s. Well, oh, there's been people. Since people have been people, there's yeah. been war. Yeah. Yeah, all the way back to the Book of Enoch. Anyhow, know that you're loved, and Lord willing, we'll see you on the next cut. Bye. Bye.